Welcome to Serengeti National Park, located in the East African country of Tanzania. We are now seeing two mature male African lions. Commonly seen in this wildlife mecca, lions are indisputably the iconic apex predator of the Serengeti terrestrial realm. As the top predators here, they need only fear potential threats from elephants and, when in or near bodies of water, crocodiles. The mature male lion seen here is neither roaring nor displaying anger. Rather, he is exhibiting phlegm response. This reaction, characteristic of an extensive range of mammals, including all species of felines, occurs when the upper lip is curled back for several seconds such that the front teeth are exposed a gesture that enables airborne molecules to be detected by the vomeronasal organ, also known as Jacobson's organ, and located just above the roof of the mouth. The functioning vomeronasal organ tells the animal, an African lion in this case, just what sorts of chemical cues, such as those making up urine, occur in the environment. Lions may thus use this organ to determine, for examples, the territories of other members of their species, the presence of potential prey species, and if a female lion is ready for mating. Clearly, such a physiological asset plays a critical role in the lion's daily lives. Here we see a male lion, the leader of a pride of ten individuals, consuming the front leg, neck, and head portions of an eland. The eland is a horned antelope that is common in the Serengeti and, in the case of larger male examples, attains weights of up to 942 kilograms or 2,077 pounds. A large eland thus comprises a sizable meal that can feed a pride of 10 lions for perhaps up to a week or longer. Regarded as both an apex predator and a generalist hypercarnivore, that is, an animal whose diet consists of 70% meat, obtained through predation and or scavenging, the African lion's prey is primarily made up of ungulates, including such examples as wildebeest, zebra, cape buffalo, warthog, and giraffe. With a few exceptions, such as the lions of Chobe National Park in Botswana, lions tend to avoid confrontations with adult examples of the formidable African giants known as elephants. And the same is generally true of rhinoceroses becoming lion prey as well. Certainly, both of these large herbivores can generally defend themselves from a lion pride. Lions also tend not to hunt smaller prey items, including hares, rodents, and very small antelopes such as dictics. It should be noted, however, that lions will readily hunt and kill other predators, such as leopards, cheetahs, and hyenas, as these are perceived as competition for prey. Lions typically, however, do not eat these other predators once they have killed them. Here we see a female member of this lion pride with one of her two cubs. While enjoying the playful interaction of this cub with its mother and the other cub, let's reflect on just what constitutes a lion pride. As social animals, which is rather unique among all cats, as most cat species are rather solitary, lion prides are family units that can consist of up to three males, twelve females, also called lionesses, and their cubs. The lionesses are usually related to one another. As they mature and attain adulthood, lionesses tend to remain in the pride. The cubs, of course, benefit greatly from their playful interactions with both one another and the adults. Indeed, it is through such play that they first begin to learn just how to wield the formidable weaponry known as teeth and claws. In addition, the rudiments of balance, stalking, ambush, and pouncing skills are developed through play as well. These will prove vital in the future as the cubs develop into effective predators, capable of killing and eating animals several times their own size. The lion cubs seen here are about two and a half months old. Young lions will begin to display stalking behavior at about three months. 
They usually become capable hunters and can live independently of the mother at two to three years old, though, as noted, females tend to remain with the pride into which they were born. Lionesses typically reproduce for the first time when they are four years old. As lionesses are polyesterous, that is, have more than one estrus cycle per year, there is no specific time of the year for lions to mate. A lioness in heat may mate with one or more males. Gestation lasts for an average of 110 days, after which the lioness gives birth to from one to four cubs. This usually occurs in an isolated refuge area away from the pride. During the period after birth when the cubs are helpless, the mother will usually hunt solitarily. Born blind, lion cubs will begin opening their eyes at about a week after birth. At this time, the cubs weigh from 1.2 to 2.1 kilograms, or 2.6 to 4.6 pounds. Although the cubs will crawl about the day after they are born, they only begin to walk on all fours at about three weeks of age so as to avoid predation from the likes of hyenas, leopards, servals, and cheetahs, the mother tends to move the cubs so that their scent from one area does not become too strong. This generally prevents a would-be predator from detecting the cubs and killing and or preying upon them at an opportune moment, such as when the mother is out foraging. At a cub age of six to eight weeks, the mother will introduce her offspring to the pride. This may occur earlier if more than one lioness pride member has given birth at the same time. It is advantageous for the cubs to be of similar age while developing as this diminishes the obvious adverse effects that would result from older cubs bullying younger, less physically strong examples. Cubs are weaned at about six to seven months. Male lions become sexually mature at three years of age and can begin challenging other males for control of a pride at four to five years. Lions in the wild may live up to 12 to 17 years. This mature male lion has just made it abundantly clear that he has no intention of sharing the eland kill with the younger male seen here. We needn't feel pity for this younger male, as both he and the lionesses now have very full bellies and no doubt dined heartily on the eland prior to our arrival. Here we see the first of three lionesses making up a small pride. Perhaps there was a male pride member nearby that simply went unnoticed by us. They are taking refuge from the afternoon sun by lying beneath a bush. Like Serengeti lions in general, these lionesses seem very unconcerned with our safari vehicle's presence and seemingly carry on with their casual, playful, social interactions as though we are not here. Let's just sit back for a while and observe these lions' social interactions, which include rubbing faces with one another and play fighting, all of which strengthen the necessary bonding characteristic of a successful pride. Notably, only an estimated 12 to 20 percent of wild lion cubs ever attain adulthood. In the Serengeti, researchers have placed the lion's survival to adulthood average at 14 percent. When one or more males takes over a pride, usually through ousting or killing the formerly dominant male, young cubs are generally killed. This may cause the lionesses to go into estrus and, therefore, make them capable of giving birth to offspring fathered by the newly dominant male or males. However, in a pride containing at least three to four females, those females may band together and fiercely defend the cubs from the usurping male or males. Besides falling victim to a new male that takes over the pride, lion cubs can die from being abandoned as well as by falling victim to such predators as hyenas, wild dogs, leopards, and cheetahs.
When it comes to consuming kills, there is a hierarchy among the Pride members, with the dominant male or males typically eating first, followed by the lionesses in order of dominance, and finally the cubs. With the sizable prey populations found in the Serengeti, it is likely that no Pride members go hungry for too long if the coalition is made up of competent hunters. On this point, it is often the lionesses of a pride that initiate a hunt and actually carry out the killing of prey. Once the prey is killed, the dominant male usually demands that his turn be first in consuming the carcass. While this often strikes human sensibilities as being unfair, it is important to consider that without the male, lionesses can be intimidated off of a fresh kill by, for example, the likes of a pack of determined hyenas. Indeed, accompanied by pride lionesses or another male pride member, a dominant mature male lion can generally put a rapid end to such intimidation as he is very capable of snapping the thick neck of the lead hyena. We now observe another mature male lion. His mate, though unseen just now, is literally just a few feet away from him. Note that while this presentation is primarily about lions of the Serengeti, the truth is that this male lion was observed in Ngorongoro Crater, just to the south of the Serengeti and at a higher elevation. However, as this was the only example of a lion pair mating that we observed during our 26-day safari, we include it here as representative of how all lion pairs mate, regardless of their geographical locale. Note as well that this is the only non-Serengeti lions to be seen in this documentary. Now back in the Serengeti, we observe a pride of some 11 lions, one of which is an adult mother that, in this time shortly after sunrise, is soon to return to the pride, no doubt having made an assessment of where to relocate, and hopefully to relocate in an area where potential prey is both abundant and vulnerable to their attacks. Note how the younger Pride members rush out to greet her, all recognizing this female for her role as an effective Pride-leading mother or aunt. Again, the rubbing of faces functions to bond the Pride together, reaffirming their commitment to their coalition and support of one another.
And here we observe six two to two and a half month old lion cubs, for the time being left seemingly unattended by the pride while its adult members are out hunting. There is, of course, always some risk in temporarily abandoning the cubs in this manner, but lions are predators and they must hunt to eat and survive, so the risk must be taken. Here in the western Serengeti near the Grumeti River, we encounter a young male lion and lioness, a couple that is perhaps looking to have its first offspring born in a month or two and thereby strengthen their now very modest pride. We can note here that older, physically compromised lions that can no longer contribute effectively to a hunt may be allowed to consume a portion of a kill in as much as there is enough to satisfy the hunger of the higher-ranking pride members. This is a further example of the rather uniquely social nature of these big cats, the lions. And now we encounter a pride of some 18 lions about to hunt a group of white-bearded wildebeest, the famous antelope of the Serengeti that, along with the zebra, makes up the constantly migrating herds that yearly travel clockwise through the Serengeti National Park and, to the north, Kenya's Maasai Mara National Park. The lioness, from the vantage point of a tall termite mound, is observing through the acacia trees before her the yet faintly visible single-file approach of a long line of these white-bearded wildebeests. An adult white-bearded wildebeest weighs approximately 185 to 220 kilograms, or 396 to 496 pounds, and will make a good meal for the nearby lion pride, which contains many hungry adolescent mouths. Here come the wildebeest. And now, having just spotted the very near lioness who has been stealthily stalking them, the wildebeests break formation and furiously run in the opposite direction, with the lioness in hot pursuit all the while. Alas, the wildebeests proved to be too elusive, and this lion hunt ended in failure. Let's see it again slow down to one-fifth its normal speed. Note how even at this reduced photographic frame rate that the lioness and the wildebeests appear to be running at a very high speed, which in real time can reach 80 kilometers per hour or 50 miles per hour. The point was made earlier that lions will readily kill predators that they perceive to be competition for their prey. Here is a lone male leopard that has been treed by eight members of a lion pride, presently on the ground below. Two of these pride members are mature males. The leopard's fate hangs in the balance as he decides to descend the tree and face these eight giant feline adversaries head on. And here, slowed down ten times the actual speed, we see the leopard chased from its hoped-for refuge of the thick shrubs and right into a lioness, who appears somewhat tentative in actually engaging this sizable, spotted, 
sharp claw, and ferocious bite-endowed feline. But in an effort to no doubt kill the leopard once and for all, one of the large males comes from behind and grabs the smaller cat by the hindquarters. We took the leopard for dead at this point. And yet, as unfolding events would reveal, the leopard somehow evaded the lions and escaped. Apparently, while being grabbed by the big male lion, the leopard twisted behind himself and slashed large male on his right cheek. We now see that bleeding right cheek of the male lion. Our guides assured us that had the leopard been killed, the lions would have brought its body out for all of the pride members to see. But instead, the lions continued to prowl about the brush area, apparently confused as to where exactly the leopard had vanished to. Like leopards, younger lion males, as well as adult females, are quite capable of climbing trees. Here we see two lionesses that have ascended a tree. One of them, the individual on the left, apparently saw a potential prey item in our direction and descended the tree to at least inspect and perhaps hunt it. The hunt, as far as we could tell, ended unsuccessfully. Here we see a dominant male pride member, along with his pride, in the central Serenara region of the Serengeti. As a testimony to the very hard life endured by all of these magnificent predators, the lions, note that this individual is missing his right upper canine as well as his left lower canine. In lions, these teeth can attain a length of 7 centimeters, or 2 and 3 quarter inches, and yet, despite this obvious handicap, this male remains the obvious leader of the pride. And now we see an apparently bold and boisterous elephant has come to inspect the area beneath the tree where the lion pride had just been taking refuge. This elephant seems to be on a personal quest to chase this entire lion pride. However, while the lions initially make a somewhat animated retreat, they apparently soon realize that this elephant poses no real threat as they can easily outrun and outmaneuver it. One young lion here is even so bold as to simply lie down in the grass and watch this elephantine spectacle from an especially comfortable position. This elephant is perhaps attempting to win social status among members of its herd by trying to intimidate this pride. 
Do note that there exists some areas in Africa, such as Chobe National Park in Botswana, where an elephant could literally find itself being jumped by a large pride of lions for undertaking such a bold gesture. Perhaps that broken left tusk is an example of such boldness in this individual elephant. But here in the Serengeti, lions do not regularly place elephants on the menu and, therefore, likely lack both the skill and determination to successfully pull off the feat of having a pachyderm dinner. This young male lion with flowing golden mane strikes a particularly handsome pose, which is further accentuated by being poised among the rocks found throughout the otherwise rather flat lands of the central Serengeti. A zoom in followed by zoom out video view of this rocky perch rising out of the surrounding Serengeti plains reveals an outlook from which the lions may very effectively survey and assess the movements of their prey. There is an undeniable touch of irony in seeing this yellow butterfly flitting about just beneath these apex predators. A lioness examines the tall grass and brush for potential prey. And a couple of two-month-old lion cubs play with one another as mom looks on, ready to protect the youngsters from any dangers. Here we see two lion cubs of about two and a half months of age that have been temporarily left by themselves while the pride is out hunting. Unlike the six lone cubs that we saw earlier, these two are more adventurous, leaving the safety of their rocky lair and exploring the surrounding grasslands. By leaving their rocky lair, they are certainly more vulnerable to predation. Mom will have to call for them when she returns and finds that they are no longer, as it were, at home. This lion cub tentatively peers out from the thick shrubs in which Mom, three aunts, and five other siblings are taking refuge 
in the early morning hours in the extreme southern Serengeti. As we watched the antics of the six cubs interacting with one another and mom or an aunt, let's consider some more of the general biology of African lions. Adult lions obtain head to tip of tail lengths of 232 to 284 centimeters, that is, 7 feet 7 inches to 8 feet 11 inches for females, and 267 to 304 centimeters, that is, 8 feet 8 inches to 9 feet 11 inches for males. East African lions average 119.5 kilograms, that is, 263 pounds, for females and 174.9 kilograms, that is, 386 pounds, for males. While southern African female lions are approximately equal in weight to those of East Africa, the southern Africa male lions average as much as 12 to 51 kilograms, that is 26.4 to 112.2 pounds, heavier than the East African male examples. Lion pride size can range from 2 to 30 members. In the Serengeti, there are an estimated 3,000 plus lions that make up approximately 300 prides. As mentioned earlier, females tend to remain with the pride into which they were born, while males leave the pride at about two to three years old and attempt to take control over another pride. Dominant males will mark their territory with urine and often use their powerful roars, which can travel up to eight kilometers, that is five miles, to repel would-be male rivals. This large, mature male lion has just finished feeding upon a Cape buffalo that was killed a few hours earlier by a pride consisting of 12 individuals. It is now the turn of these four lionesses to consume their portion of what remains of this Cape buffalo carcass. Within a pride, it is the females that, generally, take the lead roles in hunting, using teamwork to bring down the large prey upon which they feed. Like other cat species, lions sleep up to 20 hours per day. A good deal of lion hunting occurs at night, which is both better suited to the lion's excellent night vision and capacity to stealthily get close to prey before attacking. Notably, Three of the five largest lion populations occur within Tanzania. This pride, seen in the cool early morning hours, is apparently dominated by a young male whose mane has not yet fully developed. He is likely two to three years old.
The African lion population is estimated to have dropped from about 100,000 individuals just 50 years ago to 24,000 to 32,000 as of 2023. Although no accurate estimates can be made of former numbers, it is likely that hundreds of thousands of lions existed in Africa prior to the arrival of European settlers.